My name is John Gunn. I, I am the principal of Hopkinsville High School. I graduated, uh, my last degree was from Trevecca Nazarene University in 2005. I got a doctorate in educational administration. Uh, prior to that, I graduated high school in Dixon County, Tennessee, and then I got a bachelor's from Trevecca and a few other degrees that we won't, we won't bother to mention right now. So I, I would say keep your options open. Uh, there, uh, everything I read and, and, and all the, the experts continue to say that there are jobs, the, most of the jobs that exist now um, we, or will exist uh, 15 years from now, we, we have no idea what they even are. So keep your options open and that, that'd be number one. Number two, remember that there are certain transferable skills that are going to help you in any single job you go into. Uh, we hear a lot about soft skills. Uh, industry is constantly telling us we we need to do a better job in the high schools preparing our students to, to, to inculcate the, the soft skills. And that simply means getting along with other people. That simply means showing up and showing up on time. Uh, more and more that means staying away from your cellular device while you're at school. Uh, it basically just means getting a good, being a good person and getting along with others and being willing to do what you're asked to do. Uh, so that, that'd be the, the, the next thing. Just, you know, just, just imbibe that within yourself, learn to own what it means to, to be a person who can get along with other people, who can uh, show up and, and, and do a job, and then you can be trainable in many different aspects. And thirdly, I would suggest try to get a well-rounded education. And of course, you know, the, the, the immediate question is what, what does that mean? Well, learn how to read and digest information. Uh, learn how to write uh, in a way so that uh, others understand what you're what you're saying, and 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 learn some some basic math skills enough to survive, and and understand what the basic underlying concepts are. I guess those would be the three things I would I would say just in terms of overall advice to a to a to a future worker of the 21st century. I, I like to say I'm not quite sure I want to do I know what I want to do when I grow up. Uh, as of yet. Yeah, it's very normal and I, I don't think a high school student should stress uh, if they do not know what they want to do. Uh, keep their options open and just figure out that you're going to do something and, and, and also be, be willing to understand and accept that it's very possible that you might choose one career path and then decide that you know you want to go a different direction or you want to tweak it slightly or, or one of those new jobs of the future comes about and you take the skills that you've learned in, in one, including those soft skills that I, that I just alluded to, uh, and, and, and transfer it to that entirely new, um, new career. But no, I would not stress about that at all because I think that's very normative not to have a clue or not have a much of a clue what you're going to do in high school. The ACT is, is especially important if, if, you, if you're convinced that you're going to go a, a four-year college route. Uh, basically, it means that you're going to, uh, to get extra money to go to school. Uh, you're going to be eligible for more scholarships. Uh, you're going to be able to get into some schools that you want to get into. Uh, and I would recommend taking it just as many times as possible. At a minimum, I would say all students should plan on taking it three times. Uh, the first time I, I would jump in freshman or, or, or sophomore year just to get a baseline of what it's about, what the questions look like, what it's like, uh, the whole, t just the timing aspect, uh, just how the test is laid out and structured, uh, and then plan on taking it again a couple times in the, in the junior year. Uh, if at all possible. Uh, however, there are again. I, I don't want. I don't want to say the ACT is the only avenue for success. Some of us are not good test takers, and um, if if and and everybody isn't going to get a four-year degree. And so there, are, just just because you may not be particularly gifted at taking tests, uh, doesn't mean you have to um, decide that your career alternative is is second best in any shape, form, or fashion. I, I was, uh, I, I have the, the fortunate experience uh, during my first principalship, I needed some extra funds and so I taught GED uh, uh, courses in the evening for about seven years on and off on a part-time basis 
and became very familiar with the, the opportunities that that gave students uh, just in terms of you know the, the different career pathways that, that acquiring that GED gave them. And, and I think that's an excellent option for some students who you know maybe a traditional high school um, experience is not working for them or it didn't work. They decide they're going to return. We, we had a lot of our students who had who had quit school or, or weren't successful in school, did not you know didn't get that diploma and they came back and got the GED. So I, I, I definitely think it's an option for, uh, for students. At Hopkinsville High School, that would be uh, one of our counselors. Uh, each of our counselors kind of has a, a specialty that, that they work in. So, you know, if I were to come to this counselor and, and she did not know about uh, the particularities of the ASVAB, another counselor, that, that's her area of expertise and we can get more information. And at any time, if a counselor, uh, you know, uh, they, they don't know the particular aspect or all the, the, the details about a test, I also would, would I, I consider that to be a very important part of my job to get you the information that you needed. So I, I, would, I would definitely take the time to talk to a student as well. Well, if you could at all get some experience working in a, a, a summer camp, uh, working in a daycare, uh, working with a church youth group, uh, working with, with students, working with young people. Uh, that would give you an idea to start with whether you, you know, this, this occupation career is for you. Uh, also, it would help you to, to maybe discover whether that option is, is out there for you. Some of us, by, uh, by our very character, we're wired in such a way that we like to be around people, we like to be around those who have a lot of energy, uh, we like to be around those who are somewhat mischievous, uh, and, and it just, it just kind of works, works with our personality. Others of us have to grow into that. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of high school teachers in particular, sometimes they have a love of a subject area and they have to, they love that first and they have to kind of acquire that skill of, of understanding that it's, it's not just a love of subject, but it's really a love of people or at least an, an appreciation and tolerance for, for people with all of their foibles and students obviously are, are in that category some of the time. Work ethic is absolutely number one. Um, just about weekly, I say to myself about a particular uh, employee, uh, this person maybe doesn't have as, as much subject matter knowledge, this person maybe doesn't have this, doesn't have that, but they're willing to work, they're willing to learn, they're willing to try. and. Um, Anytime there's, there's a situation with, a, with an employee who's having some, some job difficulties, uh, it almost is always related to the fact that they don't have the work ethic that they need. <laughs> well, I would do uh, what I mentioned a, a minute ago just in terms of recommendation. First of all, I would get more experience uh, working with young people while I was a young person myself. Uh, I would have volunteered to be a camp counselor in, in high school with some junior high or some elementary students. Uh, I would have, have volunteered uh, to teach a Sunday school class with some younger students, so I would have gained that experience. Uh, I had a student teaching experience, and it, it, it was a good one. I had a couple of practicum experiences, but I would have liked more face time or, or uh, on, on the stage time in front of people before I actually entered the classroom because the first year was, was indeed very rough because I didn't have enough of that experience. The more experience you can have in, in a work setting uh, via internships, co-ops, uh, field experiences, the more prepared you'll be for the world of work. And, and even if you don't go in a particular field, for, for example, the education, you know, you, you don't end up being an educator. You're going to learn more about people. You're going to learn about what, what some of the expectations are at work in terms of dress, in terms of behavior, in terms of showing up, and what it's like to, to, to have orders and, and, and restrictions, and, and just what it's like to function in a work world. Yeah, I would highly recommend taking advantage of all those that you can. Homesickness is a huge problem in that I, I, I've worked with some students over the years that um, felt like we had really academically prepared them. Uh, we had helped them to, 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 take, to do a good job on their ACT or do a good job on their ASVAB, uh, to do a good job on whatever it is they were doing, and they just weren't prepared for what it was like to be away from home. Uh, and, and I wish that I could have done a better job helping them because a lot of them ended up coming back to us, uh, to our hometown, 
or the various hometowns in which I've worked, and they felt somewhat like they had been a failure. And uh, sometimes they were able to write their course and return, sometimes they went a different option, but there was always a certain sense of loss in it, and I don't think we prepared them adequately for what it was like to, to leave home and really be away from home for a while. Well, I'd, I'd like to say uh, to, to all students that, that life really is a grand adventure. And I think I'm more aware of that with each passing day. And I uh, just, just want to encourage you as students to embrace uh, what life is about and just in, with all of its, its sadnesses, tragedies, frustrations, there's also an incredible amount of beauty and good and courage and, and, and great things out there. And just want to encourage you not to give up and keep looking for, for that sense of adventure and those good things that are out there.